Sporters, are you looking for a new pair of shoes that are cute, comfortable, and can be worn every day? Finding your new go-to pair is now easier than ever with Rothy's. Their shoes give you right-out-of-the-box comfort, come in amazing styles and colorways, and, hey, you can wash them. It's a new age, people! And the best part is everything Rothy's makes is better for the planet. So there you go. They've repurposed millions of water bottles into their signature thread that goes into every single one of their products. Millions of women wear Rothy's shoes every single day. And I'm definitely one of them. They're so comfortable. I wear my Rothy's every day. And I'm Asian. I'm not supposed to wear them in the house. But you can't tell me what to do. It's my house. Did you know that for People's Magazine's first ever style awards, they awarded best flat to one of Rothy's styles? When I tell you these things are comfortable, I mean, I cannot overstate it. All right, so step up your shoes and accessories this spring and get ready to be asked, hey, are those Rothy's? Plus, get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash add to cart. That's R-O-T-H-Y-S dot com slash add to cart. Welcome to Add to Cart. Now, this is a show about the things we buy, all the things we buy into, and what they say about who we are. I'm Sujin Pak. And I'm Kula Pulaisak. We want to start this episode off by highlighting you, mm. you sweet, sweet, sweet listeners. So we're going to play a couple of voicemails Ooh. before we get into our Add to Cart. Sujin, we are mixing it up. All right. Well, the first is a suggestion that comes from Anne. I'm I'm actually a little scared. <laughs> so am I. Okay. My butthole's tight. <laughs> and that's not usual for you. You like to keep it loose. <laughs> I do. I do. Let's listen. Hi, my name is Anne. My pronouns are she, her. And yes, you do have my permission to use the audio. Um, So I just finished listening to the Take a Shower episode, and I do consider myself a bit of a shower connoisseur. Um, I love a good shower. It's part of my self-care routine. And I just wanted to provide another level of elevation to your shower. So I like to do what I call a standing bath, which is effectively a shower, yes, but it's sort of all of the accoutrement that you guys have discussed. So good scents, all of your scrubs, things like that. But There is another layer. This is good for Saturday nights, nighttime showers. So set up your shower as you would, lights off, whole thing lights off, save for perhaps a candle if you need it. Sometimes I don't even do that. I just go in blind. Lights off. It's a total sensory experience. Also, you must bring a cocktail in with you. Now, this is, this might not uh, jive with Suchin just in that you do have to sort of luxuriate in a lot of water running, um, so not necessarily in line with some conservation. However, it is delightful. Play some music, have your cocktail, and then you're not left with all of the setup and the cleanup and the prep of an actual bath. So I highly recommend this at minimum, just a dark shower if a cocktail is not for you. So just an idea. Thank you, guys. I love the podcast. (laughs) Okay. I love this. This is a sensory deprivation shower. (laughs) This sounds dangerous. This is how either two things happen. A horror movie starts, okay? Because you don't know what's in the dark there. Number two, Cuckoo or Susu slips, you know? and and, Cuckoo with her cocktail slips. Slips and busts, you know, the back of her head, and then she's bleeding out. So when she first started, I thought she was going to say, fill up your bathtub and stand in it. But you had to let her finish. You had to let her finish. and Because I was and- actually down with that. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. The water doesn't get dirty. You could dip your butt. You know what I mean? Like a dip, dip. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Guys, I was, this was amazing what I just saw her do. With her, she sort of shrugging her shoulders up and down as to let me kind of get the sense of her butt being like a little tea bag that was going <laughs> In and out of the water. Now, Anne, I love this. It does seem dangerous, but I I feel like you've maybe figured something out. And I want to know how you did. Did your lights go out? Was it a rolling blackout? 
How did you how did you discover this? I, I, I need a follow up and I need you to, to leave another voicemail. Well, I'm all for the sensory deprivation. I could see how that could be very relaxing. I don't think I could relax. (laughs) But I see how that could be for someone who regularly feels safe, that that could be relaxing. What I also love is a couple of phrases, and I wrote them down. I I wrote three things down, actually. (laughs) This is for Saturday night. (laughs) Which makes me really happy. I love a specific, a very specific self-care process. Yeah. I also like, you're going to go in blind. (laughs) When you're talking about a shower, you don't expect that. No one expected that. No, that's where you lost me there. And then I circled cocktail. (laughs) Well, that's obvious. Now, for Suchin, why it's less for her, too, is she generally showers in the daylight. If you are a listener of our podcast, you know it's going to hit around the 3, 4 p.m. block. And regardless of time zone, the sun is still out. <laughs> and what I promise you is that I will do this and I will record the audio on my phone. Okay, but just just tell someone you're doing it in case you go, quote unquote, dark for a little too long. Tell Scott okay. that this is what you're doing just to give a little knock on the door every, you know, five minutes. Pitch. <laughs> I'm going to call Suchin. Suchin's going to record <laughs> the entire experience. Oh, I'll do that. <laughs> I would love to do that. <laughs> to hear my little songbird <laughs> gurgling and... <laughs> standing bath drunk and swaying in pitch darkness but then if i hear something go wrong what do i do i call scott you call scott and if he doesn't respond then you call 911 and you stay on the line oh no you, you, you got a three you got a lot of call you got a three-way call i'm on a landline coo oh shoot but you don't have you don't haven't purchased three-way calling on your landline listen I'm going to use a landline. If it gets dicey and I have to 911 it, I will record you on my cell phone. How about that? All right. There we go. We two have systems. Two systems. Back up. <laughs> Thank you, Anne, so much. This is pretty great. <laughs> this, is, this is exciting to me. Our next voicemail is from Molly. Hi, my name is Molly. I've been obsessed with the podcast since it started, and I have been trying to reduce plastic and get as many reusable products as possible, although my husband has asked that I don't switch over to reusable Q-tips. Um, I've switched out all of my makeup sponges, legs, etc., but reusable Ziploc bags and other everyday items, but I wanted to hear more about other products that you all have found helpful. I know you touched on it a bit on one of the Budget Buy episodes, but would love to hear more or a whole episode dedicated to it. Oh. Long time listener, first time caller. Thanks. Bye. Molly. Oh, God. I actually got chills from that. It made me so happy. Um, The thing that comes to mind with this, and it's not exactly answering the question, but it's sort of answering the question. You know, I used to host a a green show on Discovery Network. I didn't know that. Yes, yes, yes. What was it called? It was, uh, I don't remember. Oh, gosh. You're actually going to make me IMDb right now? (laughs) It was on a network that no longer exists. Also a specialty of mine. I come on a network that has launched and then it disappears. Like a network, not a show. Network. It was like called like Planet Green or something on the Discovery Channel. Oh, thank you, Claire. The show was called G Word. Because green? Yes. All right. All right. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, but about half of America's solid waste comes from discarded packaging. All right. Guys, there was an episode called Ice Ice Baby, an episode Mm -hmm. called Solazyme, one called Eco Drag Racing. All right. 40 episodes, Suchin Pak, 2008. Oh, worm poop. Yes. Oh, worm poop. I do remember that. That's amazing. That's the composting. I did composting for a while with the worm poop. Um, But anyway... And this is not answering the question, but it sort of answers the question. One of the biggest ways that we can make an impact on the environment is by eating less red meat. There you go. I don't know the exact statistics, but like if you cut it by half, it's as if you were driving an electric car all the time or something major like that. I think in this country particularly, we love to eat red meat. 
but you may already be a vegetarian and a vegan. So what I'm saying is it sounds like she's kind of doing everything right. Yeah. Because I don't have any more suggestions. Like all those things are things that are great. Well, you do, Sujin. It's hair story, right? Hair story, it, you know, you, you can purchase a reusable container. You introduced me to Blue Land products. Oh, yes, that's right. Cleaning products, hand products, uh, where you use beautiful reusable glass containers and these tablets that you drop into hot water and become a uh, dishwashing liquid, become hand soap. That lessens your waste as well. Absolutely. Uh, I know this This may be controversial to Suchin as I bring it up because, again, you know, I know her habits and such. And we do we do the best that we can, right? And so another thing would be to move away from fast fashion, which is very disposable. It's not good for the environment. And to reuse, recycle, and buy things of higher quality that can be reused and recycled. Chin chin. <laughs> but I think, uh, Molly, this is a good idea of, of just like our favorite for Suchin and I to go look back at, you know, look at our at our homes and pick our favorite products and, and do a show on that. I think that's a great idea. Thank you, guys. Oh, my goodness. Keep it coming. As always, please leave us a voicemail. Questions, suggestions, um dark dark baths anything <laughs> um at all call us at 833-453-6662 okay we're gonna take a quick break and then when we come back we'll get into our add to carts welcome back to add to cart okay for me i'm bringing some things here to discuss that are still a part of the summer list this whole thing may be cut out because this is the category of, you know, is this weird? Is this inappropriate? I truly don't know. We were at the beach yesterday as a family. And as you know, when I go to the beach, I come prepared. And that means I poise it up, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, my son, he had to go to the bathroom really badly. And the bathrooms were closed. The water's cold. He has sprained his ankle. We are not prepared for him to go into the ocean and relieve himself. So Mike and him dug a hole in the sand. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then he laid on top of the hole as if he was contemplating the beauty of the waves. Mm -hmm. And he pulled down his pants. He peed in the hole, and then they covered it up. And if you go to the uh, Google Doc there, I <laughs> took a picture of it. Do you see it? Yeah, I mean, it's just, yeah, he's, he's, his face is towards the sand. He looks fully clothed. He looks like he's doing, um, I don't know what that yoga pose is. Is that the half cobra? Is it a half cobra? It's very casual. None the wiser of what is happening. It's an appropriate photo. And now I know the context. <laughs> no. If you were walking by this, you would think, oh, look at that young lad. Really just taking in a good time at the beach. And I was dying. I was laughing so hard. At this, I couldn't wait to bring it to you, <laughs> to the jury of my peers. Like, <laughs> is this okay to pee like this at the beach? And is this a normal way to pee at the beach? Uh, I'm going to answer. I'm going to, I I really want everybody to go to add to cart pod and respond to Sujin, of course. But let me, my thoughts. Um, in extraordinary circumstances, I think it's okay. Uh, I do not think it's normal. <laughs> um, I think generally... You mean this isn't... Yeah, yeah. Like, I don't think it's encouraged. Like, you're not going to see, like, the park create some sort of diagram on how to do that. <laughs> you know, we should bring Claire on. She's more of a woman of the outdoors. Producer Claire, have you seen this method of peeing at the beach? Claire's written, that's a hard no, hard no. <laughs> so then my follow-up question is, is, is this sort of genius? 
<laughs> I, I don't think it's a platform, if that's what you're wondering. Um, I think on a sort of on an anecdote with between friends and family. I mean, I guess it's you know, I don't know if it's a life hack. Um, I don't know. I don't know. know. So I bring it to you and uh, we shall see if this makes the final cut because we may hear from a Parks and Rec person that they do not want us to encourage people. Wait, so are you (laughs) suggesting that we submit this to the national parks and see before we air it? This is what I'm hoping will happen. I'm hoping you, producer Claire, myself, as we are editing this particular episode, you know, yes. and as we chit chat yes. with our friends and we say, oh, hey, yeah, a friend yeah. of mine did a funny thing. And we take a just like, let's just take a casual poll. Poll. <laughs> Got it. Got it. OK, OK, let's be critical thinkers here. D- dogs, animals, they pee on the beach, right? We as humans should know better, but they do pee on the beach. And yeah, you're not supposed to pee in the ocean. Many people do. Many people do. You're not supposed to pee in the ocean? Is that a thing? Well, I don't know. It's just kind of like we don't actually live in the ocean like a fish oh, does. Is, we have cognitive. Your, this is your conjecture. This is your I mean, biography. This isn't from like a camper's, you know what I mean, parks and rec guy. I... You don't pee in pools. We know that. Yeah. But the ocean, I mean, everyone, all the animals are peeing in the ocean. I know, but, like, that's their home. Like, we're entering, and, like, us destructive humans, we're literally defecating in other people's homes. <laughs> Again, there is a clear line between urinating and defecating. Nobody is advocating for defecation. Don't bring that to add to cart. Don't put that in our feed. We're not encouraging that. That's not what we're talking about, Kulop. <laughs> if the park's going to be like, we have a bathroom... Sprained ankle or not, we want you to pee in that bathroom, not in the ocean. The ba- there was no bathroom. I know, but like I'm saying in a... In a like, normal situation. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's a bathroom. Don't be a barbarian. <laughs> Don't pee in some, some you know, Manta Ray's home, like Kulop says. Don't go, don't go yeah, traipsing yeah, yeah. through the dolphin's kitchen. It, yeah, no, use the human, human bowl and flush it. But if there is nothing... You know, have I ever just like, I really got to go. So I'm going to just pop a squat wherever I may be out of sight. Yeah, I've done that. I've done that. Everyone has. That is the human condition. Everyone has done that. Yeah. So um, I'm no, I'm no, you know, no pee angel. That's right. I'm no, no urine virgin. No, no siree. (laughs) No siree. (laughs) Uh, All right, moving on. Moving on. Moving on to a more practical and less controversial ad to cart. Um, I've been been doing this thing now that things are slightly opening up and possibly shutting down again. In that in-between time, I have been taken in this new town I live in. I've been here for almost two years and have not seen one single damn thing because we've been stuck in our home. So on Sundays, I, I pick a block downtown here in Santa Barbara and I just do a stroll. Oh, love that. You know, just to see, just to see what, what my new town has to offer. And uh, this one was a great find, but it was sort of half introduced to me by a friend of mine who gifted me these Turkish towels from Riviera Towel Company. So just click okay. on the link there. Great. Now. I love a towel. I know you love a towel. This is why I was so excited. Now, I have never had a towel so soft on my Mm. skin. And these towels, so this Riviera Towel Company is based in Santa Barbara. And I, you know, I've heard of Turkish towels, but I didn't know what they were. And so for those that don't know, Turkish towels are colorful textiles woven from the softest, sustainable cotton grown on earth. At least that's the case at Riviera Towel Company. I mean, this is sort of a deep dive if you're really into this kind of stuff. I know a lot of you are, and so I bring this to you. 
But the other thing that I really loved about this company as I was walking around was the second link, which is they make these caftans. Cool. Oh, I love a caftan. You know, I know you love a caftan. I, I love, love a caftan. One. We talked about this with June and Jess about sort of our vacation fantasy person. Mm-hmm. And my vacation yep. fantasy person is always in a caftan. And these caftans are so soft. Really? And they're so beautiful. And they come in lots of different prints. They're made from the softest cotton. So I just thought it was a great find. It was a great local oh, I find. Love it. For everything that you buy, they also donate to all these organizations that help keep the ocean clean. Speaking of, maybe that should be a person I ask. So you're going to call the shop in Santa Barbara. <laughs> love. Hey, excuse me. Love your towels. Gotta give you some feedback. Love, love, love towels. Love the captains. I was wondering, I have a kind of separate slightly related question for you you love the ocean you make donations all the time here we go stay with me as i make this turn no this isn't a prank call Uh, no 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 i really am genuinely asking wait no i have to talk to somebody else okay (laughs) making the rounds at the riviera tell company but um super super great little find i'd like to see a photo of you in this beautiful caftan? Yes, yeah, like a butterfly in the wind. Mm. I mean, do I wear it over baggy oh. jeans? <laughs> Boy. <laughs> Why do I'm just warning be... you. I'm Why just warning you. <laughs> you, wear t- you. You wear leggings for everything else, but under a caftan, she's got to wear those boyfriend jeans. <laughs> I'm just saying a caftan can be thrown over anything in my fashion book. It's not everybody's favorite chapter. Okay, I get it. Shut it. It's mine. All right. <laughs> Finally. Summer is also, for me, the time for moving. Okay, I was trying to recall how many times I've moved in the last three years. I have moved, I moved out of my house uh, three years ago. Uh, I've done two furnished rentals. I've done one vacation rental. I have couch surf with my kids, two different friends' homes, one in my friend's home, and then one in my sister-in-law's house. I've done three long-term hotel stays. I'm about to enter my third. And so we're moving again. And hopefully, I, dear God, Kula, let this be the last time I move. This, we are now moving into finally a home of our own. We haven't had one in a while. Congrats on that part. Thank you. I've become very good at moving and storing things. Okay? So... I've learned a few things and I just wanted to share. There's nothing sexy here. It's just practical, good advice. I love it. We're not using cardboard boxes. Cardboard boxes, they have dust, they have moisture. Rats are really attracted to them. They're just not great. So Mm -hmm. have you ever used this company called Really Useful Box? Okay. It's a UK-based company. Uh, They're plastic storage containers that come in all different shapes and sizes. I wouldn't say they're easy to find, but Mm. Office Depot has them, some Office Max. uh, You know, there are certain places in the U.S. that have these. So if you see these, and if you see them on sale, which they are at Office Depot, by the way, 20% off, I would suggest trying these out. These are storage boxes you will have forever, Forever Mm -hmm. and ever. They are that well made. They stack. They come in lots of different sizes. The handles are really sturdy and they lock in place. And if for some reason the handle breaks, you can go to the site and just buy the handle. Oh, that's cool. So these are great for indoor storage boxes. And then you have the storage boxes that you have outdoors. So they're either in a storage shed or in your garage. And these are just the 27-gallon tough storage bin in black. And they're waterproof. And I mean, these have been with us for years. Anything that needs to be outdoors, we'll put in these. So I could go on and on about storage bins. Yeah. And maybe I'll do like an Instagram post because I've I've got lots of storage bin tips. You should. And how to move and store your wardrobe and all of that. So all the stuff I've learned from moving so many times. So many times. Um, When I move, uh, so this isn't about storage. It's more about like 
packing from one house and unpacking from another. I, I use reusable bins that they drop off for me and pick up. Oh, from like a moving company. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know they did that because I've never used a moving company. I always do the moving. Well, well, it's not a... It's a it's a company specifically for these bins, separate from. Oh, just for the bins. But also, I have used a moving company, but it's separate from the bins, so that I can pack and so that I never I. It's so it's not really storage. It's just packing and packing. Does that make sense? Yeah, Yeah. packing, um, moving. Yeah, yeah, that's a really good tip. I want to know what that is. Yes, and also it's not about you putting anything into storage. That's right, because you're renting it by the week or by the day. Right. All right, we're back on Add to Cart. Suchin, let's go into my Add to Cart. Yes. Um, Suchin, have you ever seen the Bong Joon Ho movie Memories of Murder? I have. <sighs> I know. Wait, so this is the Korean one, right? Oh, yeah. 2003 South Korean crime thriller co written and directed mm-hmm. by. Oscar winning Bong Joon Ho. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ba- so it's loosely based on the true story of Korea's first confirmed serial murders, which took place between around 1986 and 1991. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's so, so good. Uh, Song Kang Ho and Kim Sang Kyung star as Detective Park and Detective Seo. Uh, they're the two detectives trying to solve the crimes. Song Kang Ho is the dad from Parasite. He's so good. Man, that face. Oh, This is the second feature directed yeah. by Bong, who I, he's, oh man, like to be able to transcend language in the way that he does, this man is, is such an artist the way he draws you in and he was like that mean this he was a young man when he made this film I, I just was so taken not only by the story but just the filmmaking i don't know the story so tell me the story behind it okay get ready to get some chills okay so this film was made in 2003 again these murders w- were at least known between 86 and 91 but Recently, in 2020, okay. they finally caught the guy. That was doing it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And this man, he was already in jail. He's been in jail for kidnapping, raping, and murdering his sister-in-law. Oh, um, okay. He said that he, w- he was surprised he wasn't caught sooner. So essentially in the small town, women of many ages ranging from elderly women 70s 80s to young girls 12 years old were found murdered uh bound specifically raped and they couldn't find the person yeah there were many suspects one person was put in jail for 20 years and has recently been re- released since the confession it was a time where technology um, wasn't in place. And the reason why the killer was found was because of DNA testing and the advances we've made. Um, I think it's coming to light. It's not only the murders that they were aware of. There was many more. So the, the, the true crime element of it, which was the film's inspiration, plus this like, this true crime being solved also gives this such a weight Mm -hmm. when I like watched the movie and I was like, I do kind of remember like the, the headline a a year or two ago, but having not seen the film, it didn't stick. So once I saw the film, I was like, let me go through this. And like, what are, what's all the information? What? And I just was like, this is the full night for me just going down like a rabbit hole. Certainly in a country that has so little crime that this is so shocking, you know, to go from basically you can sleep on the street, you know, passed out drunk and nothing will happen to you. Your wallet will be, you know, there. You'll be fine to then going to serial murders. And then there was that movie, which was based on a 
Japanese short story about burning. Remember burning? That was also um, sort of inspired by this time of the serial murders happening in South Korea. I'm not familiar. I, I don't know this. It's the one with Stephen Yun. And That's he's, what I thought. Yes. yes. And he. I need to see it. Yeah. Oh, you haven't seen Burning? No. I need to see it. Oh my it. God. Well, it's Stephen Yun. You could watch it on mute. Just. He's. I mean, sorry. Let's just tangent. Uh, let's just say. Okay, the movie is gruesome. It's creepy. It's a definite fun watch. And it's hard. And he's the hottest he's ever been in his life in that movie. <laughs> he's the hottest he has ever been in his life. Adds to add to cart. Add to cart. Okay, the other thing I want to talk about, add to cart, is I'm planning an anniversary <gasps> road trip with Scott. And we're going to do our own version of the Route 66 west to east. So from west to Chicago. You are, I mean, I have, I. it's my tear ducts a little bit. There's a little bit, re- you're so bargain cute <laughs> and you're such a bargain romantic. And the both of you just still salivating for each other. It, it warms my heart and it makes me vomit. I Aww. I don't even know how cute is this. Okay, tell me everything. So S- Scott, last week Scott, I don't know. We were you know doing our comic book club with Jason Manzukis, and how did it even come up? Like I have no idea. But then Scott mentioned that he was thinking about doing us doing a road trip to Route sixty six, and I was like, you, I've never heard you talk about this. And then it started to sort of build up steam and like, well, what would we do? It's like, oh, well, I've always wanted to see the Grand Canyon. Oh, yeah, let's go to the Grand Canyon. All right, well, maybe we go to Sedona first. And then we just started to look at how other people have done the Mother Road, which I love that it's called the Mother Road. And what are the fun places we could stop to? From, you know, again, the beauty of the Grand Canyon, the vastness of that, to seeing a museum, a Route 66 museum about uh, barbed wire, a.k.a. the Devil's Rope, in where? I think it's somewhere in Oklahoma. It's been so fun planning this to plan this, this trip. Yes, because... The symbol of Americana, of freedom, of expansion. I have this need and desire for adventure. I have this need and desire to break out of the monotony of my day to day, of this situation we all find us in, <laughs> ourselves in. I like this idea of me and Scott shaking it up. And normally, a, a vacation for us is setting up in a resort, not doing any activity, just being by the pool drinking. This is so opposite. What we're planning is essentially like flying into Phoenix, renting a car that we will be in for eight days. And well, that's, yeah. Yeah, and that's a series of go to a place, check into a hotel, hours of driving, miles hours. and miles, like what and hours. Playlists, podcasts, you know, all of, all of that. And I like have become obsessed with the idea. I mean, I love this. It's amazing. Um, what are you going to do in the car? Co- like you guys are going to talk? <laughs> <laughs> like, like the thought of being trapped in a car <laughs> with someone I know very well and see all the time. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be interesting because... Because after you go through the normal topics and the normal things, like you're either going to have like long moments of silence, which is another type of self-discovery. And then, and then maybe you'll get to talking about things that you've never talked about before. You got a lot of time in the car. I'm nervous. <laughs> it's less a question of, will we have a fight? It's more like about what, for how long, yeah, how many times, <laughs> you know? And I, that I know. is interesting because it's like, yes, we've been quarantined together, but this is a large house and we can all 
yeah. hit our corners. There's distractions and, it, and yeah. And in fact, today or last night, I got I I screamed at him, and <laughs> we have not spoken yet today. Uh, <laughs> he's somewhere I don't know where doing his podcast, and we haven't really had like a dust up in a while. And I was like, oh man, when we are in a car, something's gonna come up. I think it's inevitable. I mean, we're going. I mentioned a little bit, but it, it's like fly into Phoenix, rent a car, head to Sedona, go to the Grand Canyon for a day, drive to Gallup, New Mexico, then to Tucumcari, which what a great name. Yeah. Tucumcari, uh, then Oklahoma City. And then at that basically fr- before Oklahoma City, we're going to stop by Tulsa. And then our plan right now is to kind of get off of Route 66 and start diverging into like big cities yeah and go to kansas city st louis end up in chicago spend some days in chicago fly home i mean it it, is the making of a of a a rom-com yeah you know like this will be year 13 we'll be celebrating yeah it is wild like i've been with my husband since i'm 19 years old and i'm 41 it's such a yeah, this relationship, it's its something that I'm the most proud of and is truly like my satellite, you know, and my, my space station. And like, I love him so much, but sometimes he drives me so crazy. <laughs> you guys have shed and reinvented yourself multiple times and yes. still found each other through all of that. And I'm <laughs> I'm easy until I'm not, Suchin. I think you understand what I'm saying. <laughs> it's a short drive. <laughs> but at the same time, you know, our relationship is a long drive. All right, my final thing is a game changer. Okay. Okay. Now, Suchin Pak, last week you brought to us a version of a... A s- swimsuit? Yeah, definitely swimsuit. It was a swim cat suit. Also, you, you're like, if you don't want a swim cat suit, you can have a swim legging. Mm-hmm. Um, and for an inactive person to bring that to us, it was surprising um, in a way. <laughs> and I'm bringing to you something that I think you'll find probably surprising. It's a bathing suit. It is from TA3. Okay. And it is a mega sculpting swimsuit. I became aware of it through an Instagram ad. Okay. And I was like, well, all right, let me try it. Uh, Instagram ad, I went on their um, Instagram feed. I was liking all the body types that I saw. Okay. And I was like, let me just try it. You know, so what's you got the worst this? that could happen? I got it. And? And while I, while I was waiting, <gasps> our dear friend through the pod, and I met through you, Julia Vaughn, modeled it on her feed, and she loves it. I was like, okay, so this is going to be a really good product. So it was already primed and ready for this to work for me. So I got the plungy, Suchin. Okay. Do you see the plungy? Of course, I like a deep V. Yeah. My breastises, also my short neck, it elongates it. Mm-hmm. It is sculpting. And in the back, it there's a lace-up and you cinch it in. So wait, what do you mean by sculpting? My problem area is my stomach. And so it smooths holds you in, corsets you, but it's not uncomfortable. It's shapewear. It's swimsuit shapewear. And so it's, is it holding? Because like part of the reason why I don't love being in a bathing suit is because, you know, you got that little, the stomach and, you know, you're always, I'm always trying to figure out a way to like not have to suck it in, but this is holding it yes. in? Like it's like giving yes. you flat? Yes. What? Yes, 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 yes. Yes, like wait. Let me pull what up me in it. And by the way, this is I am not new to swimwear that is shaping. I don't really wear a bikini anymore. Um, why I don't want to? <laughs> I just want to be comfortable. I just don't, you know, like I'm. But I still want to look good. And I I do f- still feel sexy, but I just generally don't wear a bikini. And I want to focus on the areas that I want to focus on, basically. Oh, I'm focused. So are you focused? I'm very are you focused, focused on this photo? I'm like, let me try this. Let me see if it actually 
works. Um, for you, I would wonder if you should do like, let's see, the lacy. I'm always interested in shapewear, but this has the dual function of possibly I can put my swim leggings over it and also swim in it. See, I could also see you wearing a pants. So it's a pants, even a baggy pant over it, yes. wearing a kimono, wearing a blazer. It is a classic look. It's gorgeous. It's not a trend. You know, it's not an Instagram trend. Yes. Where, yes. Yeah. you know, it's on one of these fast fashion sites and then you're done with it. No one is going to look bad in a black bathing suit that is also, you know, shapewear. Yes, 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 yes. Exactly. Wow. Wow. I did not expect this at all. Your road trip uh, adds a cart. Just, you know, it, it, it tingled. I feel more open to adventure. I'm open. For you. For you, for me, like, man, Sujin, like, it's exactly what you started to say. It's like, we're in that in-between. I mean, is that the title of this episode? That in-between? That hopeful, messy in-between? Oh, yes. In between the ocean and urine, in between menopause Mm -hmm. and our 30s. I mean, we're in the (laughs) in-between. I know. So let's, let's lace it up. (laughs) Let's plunge it. Let's mesh it. Cinch it up. Let's cinch it. And let's just like. Let's wear, you know, let's have fancy Turkish cotton (laughs) towels that can be sarongs if we want them to. Let's drive the Tukumkari (laughs) and hope that like it's not about the destination. It's the journey and be titillated and afraid of it all, all at the same time. Titty? Lated. Titillated. <laughs> Titillated. Be titillated in my plungy body sculpting suit. <laughs> okay. These are dreams. I think we can all agree. Yeah. <laughs> that words are being said in, in different cadences with different emphasis uh, and a current of sadness. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> That's our specialty. It's our brand. That's the flavor of this podcast. Just a, just a current, just a... A bottom note of sadness. Anyway, (laughs) top note, top note, we're plunging it, we're cinching it. Bottom note, (laughs) sadness. Bottom note, sadness. Last thing before we leave you, uh, a product line that we have brought up before, Tuk Tuk Box. Yes. And they do, Sujin, what do they do? They do um, Southeast Asian inspired snacks so it's a subscription what i love about it is is that you can go like what is the flavor palette like they give you like funky funky a little funky and then you know not funky it's so fun to experiment um tasting all of these snacks it's such a fun company yeah great for gifts to yourself to other people uh we've brought them up multiple times before and they are giving our listeners a special discount code add to cart for 20% off everything. Oh. That's uh, Tuck Tuck Box. Go to their website, uh, pick what you'd like, put in the code add to cart for 20% of everything. Awesome. Thank you, guys. God, I love when people share codes. It's like they're listening. You know what I mean? They're feeling us. All right. That's it. Another week. Another episode. We did it. Make sure to follow us on Add to Cart Pod on Instagram to see pictures of all the products we talked about today. To get the links, of course, uh, make sure you go into the descriptions wherever you listen to our podcast to get direct links to the products. Um, and we are constantly uh, up to stuff on our social media. Yes, we are. Um, you will perhaps see Kulop getting a shot in the mouth with alcohol and maybe her friend getting a shot in the mouth with fish sauce. You know, just Ah, sriracha. Sriracha. I think it's sriracha. Yeah. Also, I don't know why last show I called it sriracha, which is really weird. It's sriracha. I I don't know. (laughs) Also, make sure to follow us wherever you're listening and give us a review and rating. It helps other listeners find the show. All right. Thanks so much. See you guys next time. Bye. Add to Cart is a production of Lemonada Media. Our producer is Claire Jones, and our editor is Ivan Kirev. The music is by Wasabi and produced by LA Made It. 
and oh so familiar with additional music by APM Music. Executive producers are Kulap Vlaisak, Sujin Pak, Jessica Cordova Kramer, and Stephanie Whittles Wax. Be sure to check out all the items we mentioned today on our Instagram at Add to Cart Pod. Also, please take a moment to rate, review, and subscribe to this show wherever you get your podcasts.